And this includes everyday movement, training and recovery or exercise and recovery. So what do we need to be able to do to build this margin of error? Well, we need to be appropriate. That's the first thing. Because of the topics that I talk about and the way that I talk about them, it can be misinterpreted in that I'm telling people to avoid exercise or avoid certain exercises and things like that. What may be masked, again, to those people, to those critics, I'm just talking about being appropriate. That's all I'm talking about. If you have a poor condition of your lower back, don't jump in at the deep end and start doing one rep max training or heavy strength training. You need to be appropriate. That informs the exercises that I choose. The reason that I do so many plank, side plank, bird dog, bridge style exercises or uh, tutorials and talk about those exercises so much is because that's where I say is the entry level. Now I don't know that people watching this are at a more advanced level. If you have back pain, your back, you, you may have arms and legs that are at a more advanced stage. But if you have pain in the lower back, you have a beginner's lower back. You have advanced athlete arms and legs, but you have a beginner's lower back. So we need to think about how can we take that beginner's lower back and build it into an advanced lower back. So it can match the arms and it can match um, the legs. That's why I say most people using a, um, a, a belt that goes around the core and goes around the lower back, in some respects those are pointless because you are creating arms and legs that can lift heavy weight, but you aren't creating a core that can lift heavy weight. Your core needs to match your legs. The only reason you need a back belt is because your, your arms and legs are at a more advanced level than your lower back. So we need to be appropriate and build capacity, which includes movement, training or exercise and recovery. And what we also need to be able to do is we need to start at the level that we are or that our lower back is at, which may not mean which is where our legs and our arms are at. So we need to think about it in that way. So we need to have that understanding because if we just continue training, then it's only going to create more of a problem. So we need to get past that and we need to start thinking about being appropriate, doing the appropriate training for our lower back. Now that not only means the capacity of it, that also means the exercises, which is informed by what we talked about in part one, which is the um, removing of the triggers. So if it is a heavy deadlift that triggers the back, we might need to think about reducing that reducing the weight, maybe building the, the repetitions. If we're doing slightly lighter ones, but higher repetitions, we may need to think about reducing the repetitions, but maintaining the weight and things like that. So we need to think about it in that type of way. And in some respects, take our lower back for what it is and not what we want it to be or what we think it should be and what we think it should be able to lift. We need to take it, we need to be more objective than that. So being appropriate is essentially choosing the right exercises, choosing the right frequency of those exercises, moving properly, and by properly, I mean building a margin of error, as I've described. Can you move your spine? Yes. Should you be rigid? Yes. It depends on the scenario. But also, we need to allow it to recover. So there is nothing wrong with creating microtraumas within the lower back, because if we recover properly and allow them to heal, that's how it became, becomes stronger. The reason the back it doesn't become stronger or doesn't build resilience and capacity is because we don't allow the microtraumas to heal themselves properly. And so we're always close to that margin of error and it's always going to cause us a problem. So we need to think about it in that way. So we need to recover those microtraumas. Now, what I'm going to talk about in part four, it's only going to be a short section, but I'm going to talk about this low back account, which is going to essentially sort of wrap this up and summarize it and hopefully help you make sense of what I mean by margin of error, um, low back condition, uh, so on and so forth.